Good morning, Lemon. So I just woke up. I am going to do a get ready with me. I do not do makeup that often, as you know, by watching my videos, but I will do that today. Don't laugh at my applying makeup techniques, okay? So just bear with me and we'll see. No. Hey guys, so for my regular watchers, this video contains a reaction segment in where I am discussing some of Emmerlyn Reed's most iconic expressions. If you are not interested in that, then please skip forward to where I am making brownies later in this video. You can find the timestamp for that segment in my description box below. Hey Lemons, so today I wanted to talk to you about a very controversial YouTuber named Emmerlyn Reed. But if you Lemons don't know me, first a quick introduction of myself. So my name is Tamar, but you can call me Tammy. I'm on a weight loss journey. I used to weigh 440 pounds. Here's a picture of what I looked like. Right now I weigh around uh, 310 pounds. Here's a picture of what I looked like at around 330. I am successful, but I am struggling a lot too with binging and restricting. I'm currently busy with trying not to binge. I try to sort of plan overeating episodes so I can still my hunger as you will right now that is going okay i do not advise you guys to live this way but i do document how i'm losing weight and just all the struggles that i am experiencing so about Emberlyn reed i started watching Emberlyn reed in the early destiny area she just broke up with crystal and then got together with destiny she was mobile she lived a happy life or well from what i could see as a viewer she was living a pretty normal happy life she was outgoing she went to store she vlogged a lot i liked her content i watched like pretty much all her videos and i really like them she has gotten bigger and less mobile and then she hit like the 572 or something pounds i felt devastating for her and i know she goes through these cycles i think a lot of people are not like haters like she describes them i think a lot of people are just they just grew tired they wish her well and every time she is like trying and then failing and then trying and then failing and it's very frustrating her health is deteriorating so it's very hard to watch so that's a little quick introduction she's a very controversial person she started her weight loss channel but um through the years she gained and gained and she has a uh, quite a big following and she also receives a lot of hate uh i think like i said people are just fed up with her and they want to see her do well as a fellow fat girl i wanted to dive in a little bit deeper in some of her most iconic expressions so yeah let's get into that we will be covering a few of those expressions and um yeah so let's start the video so there is a clip of emily reed she talked about her and her uh, girlfriend at the time becky and she was very sad and very upset and she talked about becky and said something like she doesn't know nutrition the way i do like she was very concerned about her and that's what she said so that grew to be a very iconic expression of emmeline reed i have to say that i do understand where she's coming from i lived a long time with an ex of mine in the trend of emmeline reed he's still my best friend when i met him i was like 270 to 80 i think when we broke up I was like 440 pounds, so I gained a lot in that period. I was worrying about myself, but I also was worrying about him. I have been bigger as long as I can remember, so I started dieting when I was like 11 or 12 or something. I learned a lot about exercising, about calories, about macros, about nutrition. I get that she was worried about Becky because I was and am also worried about my best friend. He gains weight too and I really really do want him to lose that weight. I pretty much grew up with dieting so I do know a lot of it and he isn't. I do understand where Amberlyn Reed was coming from when she said that. She could have been a little bit more nuanced like I am worrying about my health very very much but I also worry a lot about Becky. 
because um, I want her to lose weight really really bad. I want to lose weight myself too, but I'm worrying more about her. You should worry most about yourself. Sometimes that's very hard, but you are the only person that can change your own life. And it's very sad sometimes, but every person has his or her own responsibility to live in a healthy way. And that can include losing weight too. Yeah, I do understand her expression. And I think she gets a lot of backlash for it. I do understand it because it's not just something that's standing on its own. It's just this waterfall of controversial things she has said and she has done and all those things together. I get why people are just fed up with her and uh, disappointed in her and stuff like that. So in conclusion, I do think she was very worried about Becky and about Becky losing weight and I think that she was more worried about Becky than herself at that moment in that video and I do get that people are like maybe you should just take a look at your own habits first. If you look at those two like factual, Amberlynn Reed is worse off right now. So it's very understandable that people are like well maybe you should worry more about yourself before worrying about Becky because look at yourself. I do understand that. So yeah, that's about it. So on to the next one. So for the second expression, that one has to do a little bit with the previous one. She says something in the lines of, I know more about nutrition than you think. So this ties in with what I said earlier. I have been brought up with dieting and dieting culture. When I was 16, I weighed uh, 115 kilos because where I live, we use kilos. So I was 16, I was very heavy. So I went to this club or hospital with other bigger children and we talked about our calorie intake, about what we would eat. We would learn about calories, how burning works and about uh, sugar, how sugar hits your body and stuff like that. So I learned a lot right there and that's not the only thing I've been through. I've been through some uh, things in the hospital, some programs, I went to dietitians. I think that when you're bigger it's not uncommon for people to reach out to you and that they are brought up with a lot of experience about losing weight and about nutrition and stuff like that. So I don't think it's weird for her to say I know more about nutrition than you think. From what I understand she has had a lot of uh, homes because she grew up in foster care. So she probably has had a lot of experience with going through diets, going to see nutritionists and stuff like that. So I do think that she knows quite a bit about nutrition actually. But knowing about nutrition doesn't mean that it is easier to lose weight because losing weight is very very hard. For some people it comes a little bit easier, for some people it is very hard to lose weight. It all has to do with your mental state really. And as a person who was very very addicted to food, and maybe I still am, I don't know, on my heaviest, weighing 440 pounds. I also had this idea that I know a lot about nutrition because I still am convinced that I do know a lot about nutrition. But at the same time, that isn't a guarantee for losing weight. Sometimes it even makes it harder, I think, because when I speak for myself, I think that knowing a lot about nutrition isn't a good thing per se because I know that I developed a sort of coping mechanism style where I could just silence those voices in my head that were saying like oh but you're eating a lot of sugar you're eating a lot of calories you're eating way too much fat you're not getting enough vegetables the coping style that I used and I think a lot of people use was just to uh, ignore it so I wouldn't look at the labels, I wouldn't look at the nutrition facts, I would not put it down into a notebook or something. I would just try to not be confronted with it as much as possible. Yeah, knowing about nutrition doesn't mean per se that it's easier to lose weight. It's just something you know or you don't know. So I do believe that she knows more about nutrition than she thinks. And I really, really hope that all the information she does have about nutrition that that's going to help her when she decides to take her weight loss seriously. So in conclusion, I do think she knows more about nutrition than most of the people who watch her think. I don't think that knowledge about nutrition is helping her right now, but I do hope that this knowledge is going to help her once she decides to take her weight loss seriously. So yeah, on to the next one. This third and last one is the last thing I wanted to talk about. I think it's one of her most iconic expressions. There are some clips, some videos where she's like, when I'm in a binge, I am not in control of myself. There is this binge monster that's coming out and I can't do anything about it and blah, blah, blah. I am going to talk about this from my own experience. So I'm not talking for everybody because everybody's experience are different. For me, as a fellow binger, as a fellow fat girl, I get binges too. 
and there's a clear difference for me between a binge and between overeating. So for me, the distinction between overeating and a binge is literally the thing that Amberlynn Reed talks about. It is possible for me to overeat on like 8000 calories and not call it a binge because that sense of control is there. When I'm in a binge, I indeed experience a lack of control. That doesn't mean that I'm not in control because I am in control. I am in control of my life. So maybe at that moment I don't feel in control, uh, but in the end I am. When I am having a binge, I have this feeling that I can't control myself around food. At that moment, my addicted self, my addicted behavior, it is like it is taking over my body. I do get that Amberlynn Reed describes that as a kind of a binge monster. I have called it a binge monster myself too. So I do understand what she's talking about and I do fully agree with it. But the difference is, like I said, even if you're not in control at that moment, once you gain like control, in every binge there's a moment that I'm so full that I physically cannot eat more than I have had in that moment. And normally that's the moment when I regain this sense of control. So even if you're not in control in the moment of a binge, you regain control after your binge. And that's when you are able to decide like, okay, I do have a problem because I do binge and I sense this lack of control. So what am I going to do? And what am I going to change in my life to get control of my body? And of course, it's a learning process. It's not like, okay, from now on every binge I will have control. That's not how it works. And I think that's where a lot of people get upset with Emily Reed because she has this like external locus of control where she blames this binge monster for binging and essentially in the end making her bigger. That's not how it works because that binge monster, as she calls it, is also a part of her personality and also a part that she's fully able to change. And it will be hard, it will be a lot of hard work, it won't be easy and I think she definitely needs some professional help with it. But she is able to change it. And I think that's where a lot of people get mad at Amberlynn Reed when she's talking about that binge monster. Because every time she's talking about that, she is moving the responsibility from herself to this part of her, to that binge part of her. And she's pretending like that's a part that she cannot change because it's just the way it is. I am fully convinced that when she seeks professional help, she can overcome this binging. She may be prone to overeating, maybe sometimes binging her whole life. I see that with myself, I still binge, I do feel like crap, I do feel like shit afterwards, I blame myself for it, I restrict because I want to lose weight. I am no way near healthy. It's very sad, but it is the way it is and you can change it like in a day, but what I do believe is that with enough effort you can change it. Emily Reed can change her binge mind and if she wanted to, that she can seek professional help and just work on it. I think she really could lose weight. I really think she could. So I am skeptical about it, but I do hope that she will lose weight. As a piece of advice, what I just want to say is that Emily Reed, if you are watching this, please, please go seek some professional help. And professional help only helps when you really, really embrace it like a full hundred percent. These people, they have learned for it and they are professionals and they are people. So yes, they will make mistakes. I just wish her all the best and I do get that a lot of people are like exhausted with her and they're just so tired of her trying and then not trying and then saying she's going to try and then not trying and then cancelling her lives and then just... I know that people are fed up with her. But I also do know that her audience is very forgiving because every time that she is like trying to lose weight or doing something with the goal of bettering her health. The ratio from like and dislike, you see that just go from a lot of dislikes to a lot of likes. So I really do think she is neglecting her audience and I think her audience can be like a great motivator and I hope she sees that. I am skeptical about it, but I do hope that she's going to succeed eventually. And when she does it, I'm all for it, so. So in conclusion, I fully do believe that when Emmerlyn Reed has those binges, that she experiences a lack of control. It's very recognizable for me as a fellow binger and as a fellow fat girl. What I do not believe is that that part is a part that can't be changed. And I also don't believe in blaming that part for binging or getting bigger. She should just accept like, this is a part of me that is very sick and um, I need to fix it. So maybe I should get some professional help with it. 
Okay guys, so I'm just done filming the part about Emmeline Reed. I was thinking about doing that for a while now, but I was dreading it because of all the editing and stuff. I'm going to edit it. Most of my other videos are pre-recorded and this one will be in real time. People that do watch me, they know that I don't wear makeup that often, so I am going to take it all off. I'm going to bake some brownies, so if you like that, then stay with me and um, yeah, we'll first go to the store and then we'll make some brownies. And they are going to be delicious, but first makeup off. So, three, two, one. Surprise, surprise, I didn't take it off. Right now, I am walking to the store to pick up some chocolate and some milk. Milk, just because I need it, and chocolate, because I need it for the brownies. So, that's what I'm doing right now. It's like typical Dutch weather because it's raining. I don't mind it that much. So I'll see you in the store. Mm -hmm. Chocolate, chocolate, here. I forgot to recycle these two, but I will do that next time. My eyes are still very puffy, as you can see. There is some leftover makeup. I couldn't get it all off, but um, yeah. So for the brownies, I will be needing um, 225 grams of butter. Then we will be needing some dark chocolate. We will be needing 115 grams. I put in that one chocolate bar and it says like 117 grams. So I think I'm lucky. I'm going to place this bowl over a pot with boiling water. And then we are going to let this melt. Then I do have these hazelnuts. I am going to put them on this tray and just give them a little roast in the oven for a few minutes. My oven is at 175 degrees Celsius. This is doing great. It is melting. I just have to be a little bit more patient. Then I have my baby right here, but of course you can also just do it by hand. So I needed to use two eggs and I was putting them in a the bowl and then I cracked one and it screwed it all over me. So yay, baking brownies. So much fun. So yeah, one more egg to go. Right here I've got two eggs, one extra egg yolk, 330 grams of sugar, a little pinch of salt, and I'm also going to add a little bit of vanilla extract. So that's enough. And then I'm going to just mix this until it's airy and until it looks good. I'm starting to smell my hazelnuts, so I'm going to get them out there. And I'm just going to let them cool off a little bit. This is what they look like and they smell delicious. I have taken these out of the oven and right now I am crushing them. I'm just crushing them with this cup and then pressing it down like this. It smells so good, your lemons. I wish you could be here right now. So this is what it looks like right now. Don't mind the mess because it is a mess. I have to do the dishes later. I'm going to weigh off some flour and then some cocoa powder. Right here I have the chocolate mixture with the melted butter. It's all nice and melted and it has to cool off a little bit. Then right here I have all my crushed hazelnuts. Here's some extra flour because I almost ran out. And as you can see right here is the egg and sugar mixture with the vanilla extract and the salt. I need 125 grams of flour, so I am going to measure that out with my cute little spoon. 125-ish. So I'm going to pour this in and then I'm going to stir that very, very carefully because I do not want the air to get out of the mixture. So let's mix this and um, yeah. This is what the mixture looks like and now I am going to add my flour and my cocoa powder. I am going to sift it because there can be some lumps as you see right here. I am going to stir this in as well. And when I'm done I'm going to mix in those crushed hazelnuts. So in go the hazelnuts. I'm going to give that a stir and then it's ready. Now I'm going to line my pan and I'm going to throw it in the oven. My oven is still at 175 degrees Celsius. This is my tray with brownies and I'm going to put them in the oven. I'm going to leave them in the oven for 40 minutes. Okay, so as you can see, I have some work to do. It has been 40 minutes, so I'm going to turn this off. So one very important thing I forgot to tell you, once the brownies are ready, just leave them in the oven because in the middle the batter is not solid yet. When you want like a brownie shake, then yeah, feel free to take it out, but it's better to just leave it in and then close the door and just let it cool off completely. Okay, Lemon, so it is the next day and I am cutting 
into my brownie and it looks perfect. And then for my friend, I have this little cute container and I also have this cookie cutter. So yeah, I was going to do these dishes yesterday, but I had no energy left and I didn't do them. So I am going to do them right now. I'm finally done with my dishes. It took me like 30 or 40 minutes, so quite a while. Here I have some chocolate. I'm going to heat this up in a microwave. It's very important to stir regularly because otherwise it will burn. So let's do that. So here's my chocolate and then here I've got my brownie. I have to stir it through because there are some lumps with not melted chocolate. This is what it looks like. I am going to clean this off um, because it's not nice and all those fingerprints. Yeah, I have to get rid of that too. Yay, more dishes! Right here I have got some white chocolate and I'm going to put that into this piping bag. And then I'm going to decorate my brownies with it. Right here is the brownie of my friend and I am going to decorate it. So this is what it looks like and I will um, make something else for her too. So.